The space, guys. Not the space, the space. Welcome, guys. This is my response. This is my response to the video. There's an ex uh, member of the Sangha who left and who is now um, presenting things in, in a way that is very easy to fall in delusion with. Let's put it like that. Um, this is my response. I'm not going to go over the content of the video because, like I said, it's only um, food for delusion. But I wanted to address um, one of the things that I got the most uh, from following Swamiji, from internalizing the cognitions he's sharing with us. And one of, I guess, wisdom and powerful cognition um, that I have um, sort of got while constantly contemplating um, on everything that um, he's sharing with me and the environment in which you know I was uh, in when I was as in India, as a sannyasi, as a monk, as an apad sannyas. And um, one of the things I got to understand which empowered me so much and made me realize how much we are in delusion um, in the normal life. Before I start, I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam. So I'm going to go straight to the point, okay? No fluff, fluff, just um, no drama, no nothing. I'm just, I'm just going to go over the title of her video and I think that is enough uh, for me to send my point across. Title says brainwashed by Nityananda, um, most dangerous cult, beware, and something like that. Um, so, I wanted to talk about responsibility and this idea of being brainwashed, the, even the very concept of being brainwashed and the concept of being a victim. So the purpose of the spiritual truths and the powerful cognition is for us to enter into, to rediscover the space of all powerfulness. A space where, like Swamiji says, we are responsible for everything that happens inside of us and outside of us. One of the most important thing I find that um, I have gathered by being with Swamiji for the last five years is my capacity of my increasing capacity of identifying the space from which somebody operates so there's many dimensions of interaction you know the interaction only through the words through the emotions through the body language um, through physical action and ultimately the space from which all of these arise if we only focus on the words or emotions or body language, we will not be able to see the reality as it is because it's only a portion of the communication. It is only a, one dimension of the interaction. What is the most important is to identify the space. Everything arises from the space. From what space is the person coming forward in the way they are coming forward? When you identify the space and you respond to that being from that space, you will be able to enter into the space of listening. If you just listen to the words, the emotions and the body language, that is not enough. We need to find the space. The seeking has to be fo focused towards the space. In this video, um, Sarah, she basically says that she is brainwashed. And I really wanted to talk about this because this is a, a thing that, I don't know, it seems many people are struggling with this idea of being brainwashed. As Swamiji made a funny uh, comment in the past saying, I'm not brainwashing, I'm washing your brain, basically reestablishing powerful cognitions from the space of enlightenment so that we can get rid of our identity, get rid of our powerlessness, of our ego, so that we can realize the pure self, the space of Paramashivoham. But I'm not even going to go that way. I'm just going to go towards this idea of being brainwashed. See, when you go forward and you say, I have been brainwashed, what are you saying? What are you saying really? What you're saying is basically, 
I have engaged with life in a certain way up to now. I have done certain things up to now. But all these things I did in a space where I was not fully myself. I am not me, whatever that means. Then we can debate on that, but I don't want to go that route either. What it means, basically, what is basically being said is I am not responsible for everything that I have done. Being brainwashed is nothing but a decision to play the role of a victim to kind of soften your audience so that they support you in that victimhood mentality and they do not hold you accountable for what you have done. And that is the big problem. If you play, if you play the victim card, if you play the victim drama, I am a victim. Sure, you can experience it, you know, it's not like we're, it's not being insensitive to what is happening, but there is completion that can be brought to that. And ultimately, we are the super consciousness. We are manifesting what is happening. We are manifesting our reality. So we really need to put a lot of attention into that to understand the deeper meaning of these spiritual truths. These cognitions are highly powerful. If you cognize them, if you chew them, you know, continuously chewing them, you will extract the essence of these cognitions and they will empower you so much. And at some point you will realize that being a victim is not a space you want to be in. It's not a space you want to cherish. And for that, you need to be responsible. So just putting yourself forward saying, I have been brainwashed by a dangerous cult. It's like a huge drama just to say that don't hold me accountable for everything that I've done. I am not responsible for that, which is pure hypocrisy. It is pure, it's dangerous. If you see somebody coming towards you from that space, you should not engage with that kind of space. You don't want to live the victimhood mentality. You want to own your decisions, to own your actions. You want to be aware of what you're doing, why you're doing it, how you're doing it, what is what you want to build or construct or create by cherishing these thoughts or these actions. You have to have this level of responsibility constantly being cognized in you. Just saying, oh, I've been brainwashed. Please, world, forget me, everything that I've done. Please, I request... Forget, forget forgiveness, whatever, forgetfulness, <laughs> both at the same time, forgiveness and forgetfulness. No, that is not consciousness. That is not owning your reality. That is not owning your life. That is not being responsible. If somebody comes towards, that's my, my take. If somebody comes to me from that space, I know very clearly that they don't want to take responsibility. But the problem is when you don't want to take responsibility, you will remain powerless. If you put the responsibility outside, if you blame outside, you put the power outside. If you take responsibility, then you can do something about it. Power is inside. You can continue to move towards creating your reality. But the moment you put it outside, it's gone. It's finished. It's no longer yours until you decide to take it back, until you decide to take responsibility. So then again, this whole thing, thats I don't want to go any deeper than that. The title itself shows the space that she is operating from. And it is not a space that will enrich anybody. It is a space that will just promote being more irresponsible, more um, stuck in that, um, yeah, not wanting to own what is in front of us, what life is putting in front of us, which is not going to help um, you to be successful in anything you do. You don't want to be in that space. That space is just not a space of powerful cognitions. When you engage with spirituality and spiritual truth, you want to entertain cognitions which raise you, not cognitions which lower you. And these cognitions, these ideas of being brainwashed and being victim is nothing but being lowering your consciousness, not taking ownership from your life, not living that Ishwaratwa, that the power of responsibility, the power of leadership. And it's a delusion because when you listen to it and you don't understand this, automatically you'll be like, yes, yes, you're right, yes. No, the whole thing is nonsense. You have to see it. And if you're falling for it, that means also there is some form of blind spot that is sitting inside of 
inside of the, the, inner, the inner space and it should be attended to because we have to constantly cognize responsibility in every dimension, not one or two dimensions or not only the dimensions that we are taught in in the normal life or in the education. Responsibility is a huge cognition. It's extremely powerful. That's why it leads to the manifestation of the power of Ishwaratwa, which is basically Lord of the Universe. That's what it means. You start to realize that you are the creator of everything. You are the Paramashiva, the ultimate super consciousness. But for that, you have to take responsibility each step. You cannot go to people and say, oh, no, please, sorry, I was not myself. This is not me. This is no. <laughs> if somebody goes, if a, if a criminal kills somebody, goes to court and in front of the judge is like, oh, sorry, I was brainwashed, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't change the fact that a person is dead. A person is dead. That's the reality. You can play the drama you want, but you are responsible for the reality. What happened? You are responsible for that and you have to take ownership of that. Only then you can remain in the space of powerfulness and grow spiritually and have a life that will be filled with bliss, higher cognitions, powerfulness, health, and all the auspicious attributes and qualities that consciousness radiates. So that is my response to that video. Be careful. If somebody comes to you from the space of I am victim, my, my opinion is run away from them. They are not going to help you in any way in your life. They don't want to contribute, they just want your sympathy or perhaps your attention for the sake of supporting their own inauthenticities. So that is not, that is not, the, that is not the right decision to make when you want to raise your frequencies. If you don't care about your frequencies and you want to live in whatever way you want to live, that's fine. But if you want to raise yourself, run away from that space. That space is highly toxic. Nityanandam.